ever since a very young age, I repeatedly got asked one question. Where are you from? It seems like an easy enough question to answer. I presume that the majority of you would say, from Poland. However, I always struggled with finding a response that would accurately convey how I felt about my nationality and my culture. Whenever I got asked the question, it usually went something along the lines of, oh, so where are you from? Uh, I'm from Poland. Oh, but you know, you don't really sound Polish. Well, that's because my mother is Canadian. Oh, but you know, you also look kind of Asian, maybe Ch Chinese or something. Yes, my mother is uh, Chinese Canadian. Oh, so can you say something in Chinese? Please say something in Chinese. Actually, I don't really speak Chinese. I've never been to China. Oh, so you've lived in Canada, yeah? So what's that like? Um, well, I've actually not never lived in Canada. I was born in London. And usually at that point, someone would just change the topic. How I answered the question always also depended on what environment I was in. In Poland, I feel Canadian, I feel Chinese. But when I'm in Canada, I definitely feel more Polish. So having been asked this question so many times made me wonder, why is it so important for us to know where other people come from? This shows that we are strongly attached to our own culture and where we come from, and we view others and the world through its lens. Cultural divisions have existed in our societies since the time we have been gathering in tribes. However, sometimes where we come from, our background, becomes such a strong part of our identity that it overpowers the other things that truly matter more. Writer and reporter Ryszard Kapuściński said, in Poland, a man must be one thing, white or black, here or there, with us or against us. I think this quote very accurately, accurately describes the situation in Poland. Luckily, racism is more and more rare However, there are still these strong cultural barriers in our society. We choose to divide ourselves based on nationality rather than build bridges between us based on the things that can unite us. For an example, often in the Polish media, one can encounter uh, descriptions of physical features of foreigners. This is an example of a headliner from a well-known magazine. Yes. We all know what Asian people look like. Why then did the journalist choose to underline the physical feature? This creates an unspoken barrier between us, gives this attitude of them and us, foreigners and ours. This was not the most important thing about this article, yet the journalist chose to emphasize it. Also, similarly, we can see this in the depiction of African people. We are all aware what people from Africa look like, but still there is this strong tendency for us to describe the physical features, to divide ourselves, when in fact, if you just think about it, it doesn't really make a difference what someone looks like. Uh, one of my favorite examples comes from the recent uh, 2014 Olympic Games in Sochi. This is a photograph of the Canadian men's hockey team after they won their gold medal. If you have a look at this photograph, do you see anything unusual, anything strange? Our known and loved commentator, Mr. Dariusz Spakowski, did. While he was commentating the uh, final match, throughout the entire time, he referred to one player as black-skinned Saban. Throughout the entire match, he highlighted the physical features of this player. It is, of course, amusing to us, but it is also proof that we are still prone to create these cultural and national barriers. We choose to divide ourselves rather than unite. I also uh, noticed a similar occurrence while attending an international language camp in France. What I noticed that is that immediately people divided themselves based on their nationality. The Swiss people only associated with other Swiss people and spoke German. Spanish people spoke to other Spanish people in Spanish. But in fact, we were all united there by our common goal to learn the French language. Why then did we still divide ourselves? Of course, it is easier, more natural to speak your own language with someone who comes from the same country as you do. But isn't the whole point of such language camps, of such experiences, to step out of your comfort zone and try to get to know people from other cultures? 
try to truly find out what it's like to live where they live and try to make friendships based on the things that really matter, such as our values, our passions, what we're interested in, what we want to achieve in the future. Those are the things that can unite us rather than divide us. On the contrary, I also attended a language camp in Quebec in Canada. And what I noticed there was that people were more eager to break these cultural barriers. They were definitely, it was definitely easier to make friendships with people who come from completely different cultures than we do. I believe this is because multiculturalism and biculturalism is a fundamental part of Canada. As you can see, this is a census of ethnicity in Canada from the year 2006. People could pick with what nationality they identify the most. And what is interesting, it, they were allowed to pick more than one. And in, the most in most cases, this is what happened. You can see all these many different nationalities. However, the majority of the people identified themselves as Canadian. There's no such thing as an ethnic Canadian. Canada is a country that was built from immigrants and their descendants. However, all these people coming from various different groups, speaking different languages, celebrating different traditions, they were all united by these Canadian values, by their Canadian identity, which wasn't based upon their culture, how they were brought up, but it's based on the values, the things that matter the most. There were definitely more unspoken barriers in the camp in France than in Canada as there are definitely more barriers in the Polish society. It is my strong wish for us to overcome these barriers, and by being bicultural is definitely a springboard for that. A Czech proverb says, you live a new life for every new language you speak. If you know only one language, then you live only once. I believe this also applies to cultures. If you allow yourself to experience only one culture, then you have a very narrow spectrum, when in fact, there's so much more out there for you to get to know. The world is shrinking, and we all belong to this global community now. It is crucial for us to truly try to get to know other cultures and to build meaningful relationships with other people based on what they are passionate about, what are their goals for the future, not only uh, identifying them based on the fact that they come from a different place, being bicultural means reconciling two worlds in one person. It means having access to multiple perspectives. I can view the world as a Polish person. I can view the world as a Canadian person, as a person with Chinese background, as a person who was born in the United Kingdom. This also encourages me to look at things with an open mind, to refrain from judgment. Being bicultural is definitely a springboard for overcoming these national barriers and building bridges based upon the things that truly matter. This is a rice bowl. To most of us as Polish people or as Westerners, this is simply a rice bowl, nothing beyond that. However, if I ask my Chinese grandmother, she'll tell me a whole entire different, entirely different story about this. In Chinese culture, people who know each other well don't greet each other with saying, how are you doing, or yak she mash, but they will say, um, and what that means is, have you eaten? Are you full? To someone who doesn't know that, it would be, one does not understand the significance of food in Chinese culture. Food is so much more to Chinese people than uh, people in the Western world. And by having access to these multiple cultures, by belonging to them, one can truly understand, step into the shoes of another person, and view the world through multiple perspectives. If I asked my Polish grandfather about a rice bowl, he would tell me a completely different story, as would my relatives in Canada or my friends in the United Kingdom. By belonging to all these cultures, I can take what I value the most from all of them and create my own unique identity. Where we come from is, of course, very important. Our culture and our nationality is a part of what identifies us. However, I believe it should only be a foundation for the things that truly matter, for our values and our passions, our beliefs, 
These are the things that should be the strongest part of our identity. These are the things that can unite us with others. I used to think that having trouble with answering the question, where are you from, was something that held me back. I was afraid that by not fully belonging to one culture, but by belonging to many, I didn't really belong to any culture, that I was lost in this world and didn't have a real identity. However, now I realized that this is definitely a springboard, that by belonging to more than one culture, I can choose how I define myself. Thank you.